Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gary, which is on the Fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content on this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. If you like hearing about NFL talk, football talk about the Baltimore Ravens, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. Got Ravens content coming at you pretty much on a daily basis. Um, so I want to talk about Dapio and his big breakout season that I feel like is incoming. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to give you guys some practice notes, you know, things that the reporters are saying now they can't give us any really details and more about who's practicing who's not now as far as that goes it's the same guys as yesterday not practicing but a couple guys i do want to point out now jk Dobbins and marcus peters it says knee next to them but that's just because that was their previous injury and it's really rest days for those guys that's part of the recovery process the ravens have been ramping them up slowly just so that you know they don't want to risk any re-injury we know that last season was a tumultuous season for us when it came to their injuries the injury bug so Ravens are taking all the precautions necessary to not have that happen again. All right. Now, two other guys, Ben Cleveland, Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell was a vet. Um, I mean, what is this? Like year 16, 17 or something like that? Calais Campbell. Um, so he takes care of his body. You know, the Ravens have been giving him these veteran rest days throughout training camp. So no real surprise there. Ben Cleveland, he didn't have an injury designation next to him. So I'm going to assume it's rest right now until we hear something different. Um, and if we hear something different, then obviously I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But for right now, I'm just going to say it's a rest for Ben Cleveland because we don't know anything else. Um, now, some uh, interesting from the post-practice press conferences was Chuck Clark had his first media availability since the Kyle Hamilton was drafted, right? And we know that when Kyle Hamilton was drafted, there was a, not a saga, but it was a little controversy around Chuck Clark. Is he staying? Is he going? He confirmed that he did want a trade request from the Baltimore Ravens. He did want to be traded away. But he said, okay, that's not happening. I'm just going to put my head down and I'm going to go to work. So I always respect Chuck Clark. He's, a, he's been a true pro. There's been no issues about it. He's He's been happy for Kyle Hamilton when he's made plays and things like that. So he's been a true pro. So shout out to Chuck Clark, man. All right. Now, the main guy we're talking about in this video today is Odafe Owe and uh, his breakout in the second season. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is just because he's been an easy breakout candidate from beginning of the offseason, right? But I wanted to see how he did in training camp. I wanted to see how he did in preseason games before I really wanted to talk about it. Now, there was an article that came up on the Ravens Wire um, a couple days ago, I believe, that saying that Adolfo was getting more comfortable um, in, in his second season, right? Um, so, just wanted to read the quote. I just feel like I'm a bit more comfortable. Things are slowing down. Like I said, my legs are getting a lot stronger, so it's helping me be more explosive uh bend the edge and stuff like that but in terms of general schemes it's getting more comfortable and understanding with my places on the defense and it's all helping it's tying together well so if a guy like a Owe is going to be growing in confidence that's only going to be good news for the ravens because it's rookie year now we know when he came to the draft the whole big thing was oh he has no sacks why the ravens draft the guy with no sacks this high in the draft um but last year right Good rookie season. 15 games played. Only started two games last year. Played 70, sorry, 65% of the snaps. We expect the number to go to go up for real, you know. He should be on the field at almost every snap, you know. I mean, obviously he has to get rotated for rest and things like that. But when he's ready to go, he should be out there. All right. Now, in those 65% of the snaps that he played, he managed five sacks, 33 tackles, five tackles for loss, and 15 quarterback hits. That's a good rookie season for some people who had doubts of whether or not he was ready to even play his rookie year, whether he was able to get around the edge. Um, you know, it was it was a lot of question about Dr. Owe. Is he just an athlete playing football? Is he really, you know, technically gifted? Things like that. And I think last year, a lot of it was playing off of that, that immense physical athleticism that he, as he has. But he's also a good football player. And that's only been enhanced over this training camp period. Now, like I said, he's been a training camp standout. There's been multiple writers talking about him. There's been multiple articles written about him over this training camp. I've mentioned them, you know, on this channel when I've done the training camp daily stuff. Hell, Dopey always was constantly getting sacks, constantly in the backfield. You know, he even said at one point, you know, he likes to count his sacks on a daily basis to see how many he can get. So that confidence in him is growing. It's continuously growing. And I've heard nothing but good things about Odafi Owe this entire training camp. And that's what I wanted to see, right? Not only did I think that he would just be a good player going into year two, more experienced, but the fact that he's been a really one of these standout players on that defense. And this defense has some good players on it. But Odafi Owe has probably been the standout player on that defense throughout this training camp preseason period. 
That's huge. The Ravens need a guy that can lead the line. And Odafi Owe is showing that kind of potential to lead the line. Now, it's not just, you know, people like me or the writers talking about him. His own teammates, you know, Morgan Moses is talking about Odafi Owe, right? Um, he said that, you know, the biggest thing is that he doesn't know it all. He's not a, and he's not afraid to ask. That's huge, right? So he said, and so there are times we're on the field, we're literally stopping in the middle of the play and we're just talking about things. Adolfo always is so willing to take uh, criticism and learn that, you know, forget the rep. Tell me why you did this so I know how to counter it in the future. Then, you know, Morgan Morse goes on to mention he played with a guy like Chase Young. You know, Chase Young, um, you know, he's had the injuries of late, but he's a really talented player. First one to see in his rookie year. Um, and he said that, you know, we know what kind of talent he has. And Dafi always in that same kind of lane. So it's not just um, reporters. It's his own teammates seeing this, this breakout potential in Odafi Owe, okay? Then I want to mention another quote, right? Um, Mike McDonald, the DC, okay? And he said about Odafi Owe, yeah, I see him being a lot more decisive. I think that probably comes with confidence. He deserves a lot of credit. He goes on to mention several defensive assistants on the Ravens that helped him develop that confidence and things like that. And that he's working with Justin Houston on an almost daily basis. So you've seen that development really since he stepped out here on the first day of training camp, which is great to be able to say. So not only is Odafe Owe developing just his moves and things like that, but that training, that mentorship that he's getting from Justin Houston is paying off. And he's been a guy who's been willing to ask for help. That's 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 great. That's why I think it's the biggest reason he's going to have this breakout season. He's been willing to ask for help. He doesn't act like he knows what he's doing out there, knows all what he's doing out there. He sees a guy that's been in the league longer than him and say, hey, man, help me out. How can I get better in this or that area? You've been doing it for a while. I want to get to that kind of level. How can I get better? All right. And Justin Houston, I mean, I remember in the past, maybe like two weeks ago, that he, you know, he had his uh, – Media availability, Odafi Owe did. And he mentioned cut, calling Justin Houston Sensei and things like that, right? Just taking everything he can and learning from him. I think that's great. And that's going to help him out immensely coming into the second season. And then lastly, he put it out there on the field, all right? Now, the Titans game, I think he played like one snap, literally. But that Cardinals game, I think he may have got one drive or two drives. I'm not 100% sure. But the play I'm talking about is the Kyle Fuller interception. That all comes down to Odafi Owe. He comes around the corner. I think it was like a cross chop move on the left on the left tackle. And now it's a full on sprint to Trace McSorley. And he's going to sack him. He is. But I think Broderick Washington kind of loses his balance and ends up tripping up a Dafi Owe on around the corner. But the, his pure presence caused that interception. So not only has Adafi Owe been doing it and he was he was standing on OTAs. He stood out in mini camp. He stood out in training camp. Now he's standing out in the preseason games. All that's left is regular season. And I think he's going to do that for the Ravens. The Ravens haven't had a top flight guy um, in a while. Now, we lost guys like Zedarius. We lost guys like Judon. But due to the system that they were playing in with Wink, they weren't able to flourish here in terms of sacks how they did in other places. You know what I mean? So the last guy that probably really flourished in terms of sacks were probably Sellers and Doomerville. You know what I'm saying? When that, when that combo was going off. And, you know, shout out to the person in the comments that mentioned to that mentioned that to me, like, you know, the other day. So that's probably the last Ravens road pass rush that, you know, was, you know, stout. And Dolphin always going to be, I think, the leader of that new generation of the Ravens defense and the Ravens pass rush. So he has all the tools, all the ability to be the next great Ravens defensive lineman. And I can't wait to see him put it out there on the field, man. So watch out for Dolphin your way. He's coming and uh, he's going to have a big time breakout year, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan of TV. I'm out.